שלום אמרקים, יהו אבא השם יהו שי, בה השם רחק קודש ברכתם. אולי, אולי נגיד עוד פריזס די יהו אבא יהו שי, בה השם רחק קודש. And double honors to the apostles of Great Millstone who rule well and peace and blessings to the elect brethren. Not the two third brethren, but the elect brethren. Alright, and um, this is Amma One from the Great Millstone camp in Trinidad and Tobago. <laughs> TNT as it is call it. But I am a, a, a child of Israel, a son of Israel, which all so called Negroes, Latinos, Native American. Indians are all right, and um, I come to do another lesson to the Holy Spirit of Yahweh Basham Yahweh And the name of this lesson is Antiochus Epiphanies. We will get your ass back, all right. We will get your fucking ass back, you mo, yeah, you little boy. Antiochus Epiphanies, we will get your ass back, boy, you know. This first Maccabee chapter 1 verse 10 by in the Apocrypha it says and they came out of them when you're talking about the them you're talking about the um, four generals of Alexander the Great which are Ptolemy, Seleucus, Lassimachus and Cassander all right now the Seleucid dynasty was who was ruling Quelo Syria all right Quelo Syria which would have been the northern kingdom in the book of um, Daniel the 11th chapter King of the North and the King of the South, Ptolemy was the ruler of the South. They were the two greater kingdoms, uh, they were the two greater um, generals, so to speak, of Alexander, who had the greater portion of land or who had the greater influence in that time. And they had Lassimachus and Cassandra, they weren't so um, prominent when they're doing history. Although they had the portion, they were not the main players in that time he was dealing with the king of the north and the king of the south because israel was it, the whole thing is centered around the israelites at the end of the day so this talking about it says and they came out of them a wicked root name a wicked root antiochus antiochus came out of the seleucid dynasty or the seleucid line which is um uh the, which were the king of the the, the north or the ones who was ruling quelo syria area they were ruling other areas, but I can't remember them right now. But mainly over in there in Syria. Alright, and they presided over Israel, I believe, was from 301 BC, if I'm mistaken. Um, or no, I believe later than that. If I'm mistaken, I might be mistaken. But the point is, Antiochus Epiphanes is mentioned in the Bible and, and secular history also. And this man was a wicked bastard all right he was a wicked bastard and he, he, he put israel on that real heavy strain all right he put he pressure israel he, he, he tormented us he, he put us through hell he make we catch hell and disrespected us as a nation all right back there in the greek empire all right um the time proceeding was um 150, 175 to 163 BCE, all right? And this is the man who fuck up Israel, who taught to, in his heart to, to, to make Israel a, 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 um, a permanent um, cemetery, if I'm mistaken, or something like that. All right? So now, the name of this lesson is Antiochus Epiphanes. We will get your ass back. Because in the kingdom of heaven, the most high promise we that we will get your ass back, yes. Think you the might ass. Don't feel you just go and disrespect we and we just go in and take it. Alright? Because your ass back here on the earth. You stupid you the might ass back here on the earth. Devilish fag get your ass back here on the earth. Alright? And we will get your back by. They don't know plating. We will get your ass back. Okay? So let me read the scripture. It says, And they came out of them. The them is the Seleucid dynasty, which is Antiochus, the fourth Epiphanes. A wicked root named Antiochus, surnamed Epiphanes, son of Antiochus, king, who had 
been on a hostage at Rome and he reigned in the 137th year of the kingdom of the Greeks. Alright, and that is when he died, that is the time he presided over the Greek Empire. Alright. Um so yeah, the point is you can get your ass back. Now let me let me try and get some of the wickedness that you did you did unto the nation of Israel. Okay, let me try and get some of the wickedness you do week. Um this is um I'll read um um Second Maccabees chapter nine, right? This phone is really trouble now, boy. Hey. I'll read it. I'll read it from a, from a sword here, from a Bible, from the Apocrypha itself. Whom I have here, right? Second Maccabees chapter nine and verse one. It says, "About that time came Antiochus with dishonor out of the country of Persia." Because when you do the history, you get five mistakes. I want to say it, of course. So let me just read. It says, "For he had entered the city called per per Persepolis." I went about to rob the temple, yes, that is what he did, and to hold the city, whereupon the multitude running to defend themselves with their weapons put them to flight. And so it happened that Antiochus, being put to flight of the inhabitants, returned with shame. That is where he went and did. He went and tried and rob a temple in Persia and to frick him up. Alright? That is where he went and did. I remember. That is where he went and did. To frick him up. So now. He was, he was feeling shame all right he was feeling shame after after that whole scene take place he felt shame and it says now when he came to Egbatani news was brought to him brought him what had happened unto Nicanor and Timotheus then swelling with anger he thought to avenge upon the Jews the disgrace done unto him by those that made him flee so he he felt bad, all right. The the, the Persians frig him up. The Persians make him feel bad, and he looked at us, the Israelites, as a punching bag to take out the vexation. So this way, this way he coming to do. It says, um, therefore commanded he his chariot men to drive without ceasing, and to dispatch the journey. The, and to dispatch the journey, the judgment of God now following him, and he didn't know that. The Most High had the judgment on him right there, waiting on him. For he had spoken proudly in this sort. And here was the proud words this bastard now, this bastard say. It says that he would come to Jerusalem and make it a common burying place of the Jews, the land of the Most High. Pride it. This man was a devil. He was an Edomite. Had to be an Edomite because he was proud as fuck. Now we will get your ass back. Alright? We will get your ass back, Antiochus. And all is all Edomites. Not just Antiochus Epiphanes, but all the Edomites of the in the world. We will get your ass back. You ain't Gary. Don't feel you Gary. You ain't get away. You freaking still have to be destroyed. And that is thus said the Lord. Alright, thus said Yahweh, Bahasham Yahushai, Bahasham Chakodash. This is why we are outside on the highways and the byways. This is why we are outside the preaching. This is why we are outside the teaching. You devils have to pay. We'll get your ass back. Alright, we'll get your back. Go you know it. So he, so he taught to make the, the land of the Lord the burying place of the Israelites. It says, But the Lord Almighty, the power of Israel, smote him with an incurable and invisible plague. Or as soon as he had spoken these words, a pain of the bowels that was remediless, it had none to cure it, came upon him and saw torments of the inner parts. Whew! And that most justly, for he had tormented other men's bowels 
with many strange torments and let me read about them strange torments let me jump to verse se chapter 7 second maccabees chapter 7 and verse 1 and it came to pass also that seven brethren with their mother were taken and compelled by the king against the law to taste swine's flesh and jake eating pork like fucking that now but back then there was coursing on it and were tormented with scourges and whips but one of them spake first one of them that spake first said thus you see so the um and you just beat them all right this was the limit antiochus this bastard antiochus let me see if i find him in the chapter here I ain't seen any name, but I gotta look for it. But he talking about the king. But Antiochus was the king at that time. So the thing is, the king here, yeah, the king was. It says and compelled by the king. The king was Antiochus. So yeah, it says. But one of them that spake first said, "Thus, what wouldest thou ask of or learn of us?" We are ready to die rather than to transgress the laws of our fathers. Then the king, being enraged, compassed, commanded pans and cauldrons to be made hot, which forthwith being heated, he commanded to cut out the tongue of him that spake first, and to cut off the utmost parts of his body, the rest of his brethren and his mother looking on. Now when he had when he was thus maimed in all his members, he commanded him being yet alive to be brought to the fire and to be fried in the pan and as the vapor of the pan was for a good space dispersed they exhorted one another with the mother to die manfully saying thus Yahweh the Yahweh the most high power looketh upon us and in truth had comfort in us as Moses in his song which witness to their faces declared saying and he shall be comforted in his servants so when the first was dead after this number they brought the second to make him a mocking stock and when they had pulled off the skin of his head with the hair they asked him will thou eat before thou be punished throughout every member of thy body but he answered in his own language and said no he said la a Wherefore he also received the next torment in order as the former did. So they cut off his tongue, the hands, and all of that. So Antiochus Epiphanes, you bastard. You bastard, you will be destroyed. You will be destroyed. Alright? Don't feel you going on your way. All these different things you do unto us as a nation, when you had your power, don't feel you going on your way. You right? You, you, you have you have um you have you have punishments to face you fucker yeah? you you bastard yeah all right um so the, the i will jump to the point right i'll jump to the point we're looking for um right so i jump into verse 23 right so the most I, the most I kill, um, the most I, Salah, so not the most I, Antiochus Epiphanes killed the seven sons and the mother. So, when you read through it, you can see how we, dis how we, how we disrespected them. By jumping the verse, um, 22, it says, I cannot tell how you came into my womb. For I neither gave you breath nor life. Alright, she talking to she sons here. This is the mother talking to the son. Neither was it I that formed the members of every one of you, but doubtless the creator of the world who formed the generation of man and formed out the beginning of all things will also in his, of his own mercy give you breath and life again as ye now regard not your own self for his law's sake. Now Antiochus, thinking himself despised, Antiochus Epiphanes, suspecting it to be a reproachful speech, 
whilst the youngest was yet alive did not only exhort him by words but also assured him with oath that he would make him both a rich and happy man because he Antiochus the devil like same thing the devil did it when he come to Yahweh Shai our Lord all right if he would turn from the laws of his father same thing so so you know these people is the devil them is the churn them is the churn the devil the same thing Satan did to Yahweh Shai and that also he would take him up for his friend and trust him with affairs but when the young man would in no case happen unto him the king called his mother and exhorted her that she would counsel the young man to save his life and when he had exhorted her with many words she promised him that she would counsel her son but she bowing herself toward him laughing the cruel tyrant to scorn spake in her country language israelite tongue hebrew tongue on this manner oh my son so the greeks used to speak a different language that is why when you read in the New Testament, that Israelites living in Greece speaking Greek tongue, that was the people who Paul went to. The fucking idiot who talking is heathen. Paul went to Israelites who speak Greek who operated like Greeks. Because Antiochus was 175 to 163 BCE. Yahweh Shai came on the scene like 175 years after. So imagine the people who was uh, into that Greek custom. The among the Israelites. It's like the same thing today. But anyhow, when we go on. It says, um, O my son, have pity upon me that bear thee in nine months in my womb, and gave thee such three years, and nourished thee, and brought thee up unto this age, and endured the troubles of education. I beseech thee, my son, look upon the heaven and the earth, and all that is therein, and consider the most high that made that, that the most high that the most high made them of things that were not, and and so was mankind made likewise. Fear not this tormentor, but being worthy of thy brethren, take thy death, that I may receive thee again in mercy with thy brethren. While she was yet speaking these words, the young man said, Whom wait ye for? I will not obey the king's commandment. But I will obey the commandment of the law that was given unto our fathers by Moses. And thou that has been the author of all mischief against God, against the power of the Hebrew, against the Hebrews, shall not escape the hands of God. Antiochus Epiphanes, we will get your ass back in the kingdom of heaven. Alright? We will get your ass back in the kingdom of heaven. It says, for we suffer because of our sins. And though the living Lord be angry with us a little while, which is what's going on right now, for our chastening and correction, he's correcting us, yet shall he be at one again with his servants. But thou, O godless man, talking to Antiochus Epiphanes, and by extension, all the nation of Edom, and of all other most wicked, be not lifted up without a cause, nor puffed up with uncertain hopes, lifting up thy hand against the servants of God. For thou hast not yet escaped the judgment of the Almighty God, who seeth all things. For our brethren, who now have suffered a short pain, are dead under the most high covenant of everlasting life. But thou, through the judgment, of the most high shall receive just punishment for thy pride all right you damn devils especially antiochus one of these this lessons about he you're going on pay you paid back then yeah but that was that, pay, that punishment wasn't enough because the most high gave you that belly pain and he had you they smell and stink for some days and then kill you you can't pay a thousand years of slavery for that wickedness you did unto the nation of Israel, you bastard. You fucking bastard, yeah. Why are, why are cussing so I see a, a, a bust? Because I did a project with a bust. A project with the Greek and Roman Empire and the Hebrew Israelite prophets and rulers. And I put Antiochus Epiphany, so I have a bust of him here. 
it's just the face and i seen that devil in him boy and the most i will get your ass boy don't feel your get away you ain't get away right john to your pussy tiffany's you have to pay for your wickedness okay you have to pay for your wickedness and that is just yet yeah what about shami i was shy all right and with that Hopefully you've been edified and I want to give all praises to you. How about Hashem Yahushai, by Hashem HaKadosh, and double honors to the apostles of Great Millstone who rule well. Peace and blessings to the elect. Shalom HaKiyami.